When I switch on my lamp and I put on my glasses and I pick up a brush, everything melts away. Painting has changed me because it's allowed me to consider the choices I make. Since I've been doing it, my mental health has certainly improved. It's kind of like the first time in my life where I've reached a sense of calm. It's meditative in the sense that you're absolutely focused on just one single activity at the time. And that has repercussions everywhere. So I showed my poor dog, he, he got an allergic reaction. So we had to rush him to the vet at about one last night. And I was talking to the, the vets and I was like, yeah, geez, I don't know how you do it. Like I have to get up early tomorrow to do this documentary thing. And she asked like, oh, what's it for? And I said, well, I'm a miniature painter and um, they just want to ask me some things about that. And she's like, miniature painting? Like, what's that? And, and she had this like blank expression. And my sister said to her, no, she, he paints like little f figures. And then that's like, I've seen that moment so many times. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that looks cool. So you paint toys, that's nice. And she's like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, you do you. Overseas, people adopt this as an art form more naturally. And that those who don't necessarily follow the art form at least appreciate it and pay respect to it. Whereas here in South Africa, it's treated as a hobby. In order to understand the argument about whether this is an art form or not, you need to first of all disassociate it with its origins, which is the board gaming world. Most of the time, these figures were produced for board gamers and most board gamers aren't painters. So if you look at the art form and split it up into two fields of sort, there's the hobbyist who needs to paint up his army and get it on the table, yes possibly not an art form. But then you've got the other school of thought, which sees these figures as potential art pieces because you incorporate so many art techniques and processes and you are approaching every project with contrast, lighting, ideas of narrative and concepts of lines of sight and those are all artistic terms. So if we are using those kind of terminologies to explain our processes and we are using art processes and techniques to achieve the results, would that not then be considered art? I read an article and this person was going into how strange it is that you can spend upwards of 100 hours painting a model, but because it is this scale, it doesn't get taken as seriously as something that is like human-sized, for instance. Even though you need to put in a lot of thought into making this guy look like it's really a, a eight-foot-tall space marine that just happens to be really far away and is only three centimeters tall. Not taking that seriously, I feel there's a lot to take seriously about this, this stuff. I think there's just an enormous amount of talent displayed by painters around the world in producing art. But because it's associated with board games or tabletop war games, and because most of the people that play board games and tabletop war games are happy to just give it a quick uh, paint job just to get it on the table, I feel there's kind of a lack of awareness for how far you can push it and what it could you know, represent.
created a whole narrative, a scene, almost like it's frozen in time. I want to put a piece on the table and have someone view it and call things out that they notice. And that to me as an artist means that I've achieved something that I drew their attention using color or using perspective or using focal points. And when you then discover that the only piece of original work in that is the actual figure itself, but everything else is handmade by the artist, that's when it gets exciting for me. I first fell in love with actual model building, I think, through my dad. He used to have those little black and white comic books that were about yay big. And they were these little sort of one-off one stories about instances and battles that occurred in World War II. And I was always fascinated by them. And then eventually he came home and brought me my first model kit, which was a World War II Spitfire fighter plane. And I think that's where it all started. That engagement with my dad and that falling in love with then holding this Spitfire in my hands that I'd built. And that's where it sort of grew and started from there because next few minutes I was painting every kind of model kit I could get my hands on. I was getting such phenomenal response for all the work that I was producing that the next obvious question I was getting from a lot of folks is where do I learn? So that was the initial spark where I decided to start having a, a, a class weekly here locally here in Somerset West. And that went on for a couple of months and eventually the word spread and more and more of the, the, the hobby stores found out about the fact that I was offering classes. So that's initially where it started. And for me, the approach was, well, by teaching, I get to then empower more individuals out there who may not even be aware of this art form or this wonderful opportunity to be able to paint these miniatures, and more so the gamers who were struggling along, trying to paint up their miniatures using toothbrushes and such. And, you know, by being able to then share some of the knowledge that I'd gained on techniques and processes and, and being able to then allow them to explore their painting skills and improve their painting skills is where Wildstorm was born. The favorite saying that I have that I, that I always try and sort of preach to my students is that it's not about perfection but more so about completion. Because in order to achieve the kind of high quality finish that, you, that, that I aim to achieve, it takes patience and takes time. And it takes a, a matter of, of day by day, laying down the processes so that you have the ultimate and, and end result. And the more work that they put in, the greater the result. And there's this, this reward that comes from that in this hobby. And I think that's beneficial across the board, whether you're young or old. Everyone's miniatures have value um, when they, you know, for themselves. Like mm. they'll paint, no matter what the quality of their paint because it has value. Um, I want to get to the point where if someone sits in front of me, so you're sitting here and, and you're looking at this and you have to put a value to it, I want you to put a value that's more than the plastic itself. Yeah. And that's, I think, why I like putting the effort in. It is kind of a self-gratification type of thing. Mm. But I, I want people to come in and go, you know what, shit, I can see why this hobby is so expensive because of the effort you're putting into it. Yeah. You, if you told people, you know what, I spent all this money on this like super expensive car, yep. they would, maybe, maybe they'd, they'd, they'd scoff at that, but they'd accept it quite quickly, right? Yes, yes, yes. But when we tell people how expensive this hobby is, they're like, what? Yeah, people, really? at, people at work, uh, they, they just, they, they think I'm crazy for the amount of money that I spend. What's people's reactions like when you talk to your colleagues? Toys, it's the worst, when they call it toys. Oh, you spend so much on your toys. It's, sorry for the French, I was almost going to It's not toys. <laughs> they're, they're not toys. I'm not going to let your four-year-old play with them, you know. Mm. Um, they have value, um, and that's, I think that's why I, I like putting the effort into them. <laughs> My job is to be a programmer. I get home in the evening and I'm like just drained. Uh, so it's nice to kind of 
do something with my hands. You, you really have to pay attention while you're painting. You, so it's not meditative in the sense that you're off on a different planet. It's meditative in the sense that you're absolutely focused on just one single activity at the time. So when I, when I do get into like a nice um, rhythm, I, I often end up finding that the time just flies past. I have no idea what happened to the time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of puzzling sometimes, but in a good way, it's like, you know, it's, it's a good way to spend three or four hours. And it's just, I find that I'm a lot more relaxed uh, if I've had my, my daily painting time than mm. if I haven't. I think you do learn, learn a lot of patience. That's, that's one big takeaway from this, is that you, you, know, you can't really paint miniatures unless you're patient and you're, you're allowing yourself the, the opportunity to make mistakes and go back and fix them and so on. I'm trying to, to produce these like really high-end pieces because that's, that's really what my, my passion is. I want to I wanna paint the figures. I'm not really all that keen on the game itself. I don't have a lot of uh, preconceived notions about how I want people to to respond to things. I just want them to go, oh yeah, no, that's that's really cool. I uh, that's interesting, or you know. And um, so that's that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. It's like I'm I'm trying to put as much texture into every part of this model that I'm painting as I can. So if you look very closely at the loin cloth here. Yeah and like stippled tiny dots onto it. So it looks a bit like, you know, like skin or, yeah. or leather or something. And with the skulls, I, you know, try to emphasize all of the little ridges and things. So uh, I, I want every part of this, this guy to be interesting. So even on the ax, I put a bit of wood grain on there. I'm just really trying to give, give you something to look at from every angle. <laughs> and um, That there's like yeah. hidden aspects of the piece that keep revealing themselves. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that's how it's going to work out. So, you know, as, as people look at it and turn it around and lift it up and, you know, peek under his skirt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm hoping they'll see interesting things from every angle. Imagination, I think, is, is something that's uh, that kind of, you can unlearn it as you get older. And I've just tried to kind of tap into what I <laughs> used to do when I was a kid. And that's to kind of like imagine these fantastical worlds and, you know, things like that. And I'm going to bring some of that back again. Uh, so, you know, this, that's also part of why, I'm, why I enjoy it so much is because it like takes me back to my, my childhood. <laughs>
With painting, a lot of the noise goes away because it occupies like three of your senses, uh, four if you eat the paint sometimes. Um, so it's, it's kind of like you're working, you're touching, you're looking, and often there's like an audio book or something in the background. So like I've always struggled like socially with people, but luckily I've always had good friends and like very patient friends that have like put up with a lot. And it took me like a long time to figure out like what actually makes me happy. Really had like bad crippling depression last year. Um, and it was actually, I kind of came out of it just by starting to paint again. It helped a lot to like regain my confidence and uh, motivation, I guess. Since I've been doing it full time, my mental health has certainly improved. Where before it was like, whatever I was doing, I always used to get irritated. Um, but again, that's sort of mental health issues that wherever I was, I just got irritated with the situation, irritated with the people, like irritated over ridiculous things um, that don't like make sense. Whereas now, just nothing really bothers me, which is, it's kind of like the first time in my life where I've like, reached a sense of like calm. I used to be a paramedic. It's a high intensive job, a lot of stress. And to be fair, I actually only got into this hobby when I was about to leave that industry. So I wish I found this hobby when I started as a paramedic, because it would have helped me a lot more as a person. Because that a paramedic industry made me, it's a, it's a, because of the job, it made me an aggressive person, a very angry person. And I wish I had the miniature painting back then to able just to go, screw it, let me just sit down and paint and then be happy with that. Because nothing else worked. Nothing else could dull down the anger. Um, and it's not just me, I've seen across all my paramedic friends, they get so like wound up and I, can, and I know exactly what it is. And I just wish they would also find something to calm them down. I have a tattoo on my finger, it says chaotic silence. And at that point in time, I always believed like I need chaos around me. I need it because that's when everything calms down. This tattoo means nothing to me now because now I know in quiet times, I can also feel like I'm, I can handle things a lot better as well. And I honestly think it was a miniature painting that, that did that switch for me. It just makes me feel like in, in the moment, it makes me feel good. With all chaos that's always going around and life, that's very much a point where I'm quite happy, content to sit and paint and go, forget about the rest and then just concentrate on whatever is in front of you. Paint, paint these beautiful models, the beautiful sculpts, and then just paint it and try to create whatever is in my mind Let's take the Avatar, for example. He's like literally just killed an alien. So in my head, it's like, got this massive gun. So he obviously took this alien out from a distance. So he won't have any blood on him. So I'm creating this whole scene in my head and it just distracts me from the stress I had during the day. It's just a moment in time where you, I'm just happy to be sitting and creating. People that um, could do with a with a bit of a something that that gets them into that meditative mood. Too often, it's it's like you come home from work and um, you know you sit down and you watch TV and you go to bed and you 
maybe you have a drink and you know you go to bed or something like that and it's like it's not a great use of time and yeah. time is the one thing that we don't have a lot of so <laughs> might as well make the most of it you, you see so much stuff in the news about you know people just tearing things down and like the rainforest burning and the uh, you know, uh, protests and things like that. And um, you, yeah, you also need a, need a bit of an escape from that kind of stuff. I've always kind of been interested in uh, fantasy and sci-fi stuff, uh, but just playing video games, you know, that, that did the job for a while, but it's not like you can, you know, make the story your own to a, to a huge extent. So, but in this case, you know, you can, you can really tell a, tell a story with these guys. And it's kind of your own story, but you're just you know, expressing it through them. I want my miniatures to sit there and I want people to look at them and go, wow, you know what, that, that obliterator is, is in pain. The flesh is red and it's pallid and it's swollen and there's nothing he can do but lash out. He isn't raging because he's evil, he's raging because there's nothing else that he can do. That bloodthirster is slaughtering because that's it. He needs to slaughter to live. If he does not slaughter, corn will just smash him and he's gone. Someone else will come. So it's, you can't stop. I can relate to the feeling of feeling lost, feeling that you're misplaced, feeling that everything you do that you think is right, everyone else feels is wrong, you know? Just being a normal person today sometimes feels wrong because there's just so much out there that says being normal isn't right. I like the aspect of being able to do the things that I wouldn't do normally, to make the decisions that I wouldn't make normally. Um, so painting opened up that for me because when I started, I painted the good guys. I wanted to paint everything that was good in life and I didn't derive as much joy from it as I thought I would. So I chose my aesthetic to be very dark. Um, I like my miniatures to be sinister looking even when they are the good guys. The idea behind it is that it allowed me to show my creative talents, but also to veer off from the beaten track in my own life and not be the altar boy, not be the good boy Catholic sitting in front of mom. I think it's just allowed me the freedom to make that choice and to flip, um, where a lot of people don't get the opportunity to flip and it sits very much inside and grows and it festers and it comes out some other way. It seems that drama is a thing that life is built up around today. So, and I feel that the miniatures allow me to just express all the drama in the way that I want to. So when I leave here, it's quiet. It, it kind of quietens me down. Uh, and that's horrible English. But it, it just calms me and it allows me to leave this room and just, phew, that's it. Gaming used to be that for me. Um, I used to spend hours and hours in gaming. And paintings kind of replaced gaming for me. So when you came in, my father was on my PC. Usually I'd be like freaking out because I want to play. But now I sit down and I paint and I tell a story through paint. It's where we get to disappear from the mundane rat race, pay the bills, nine to five and you get to immerse yourself in a world then be let loose and just explore. And that is where I have my most fun. This hobby is something that it needs to grow, it, it does need to grow because it can bring a lot of people closer. My little cousin got into it because he saw me painting and he's Dutch. So we already have a language barrier, but we connected on that level. 
I find that miniature painting does this in general, it brings people together. If it wasn't for miniature painting and miniature board gaming, war gaming, any type of actual gaming where you've got to sit physically with people, I would know no one in Cape Town. Historically, people look at Dungeons & Dragons and all this war game and they're like, oh, a whole bunch of weird people. And no, it's just a community. And mm -hmm. I think that's what's important because everything falls by the wayside. I don't look at when I play against my opponent and think, oh, what background is he from? Where does he live? How did he grow up? I think it helps to build friendships and community. I mean, a lot of my most endearing friendships have come from this hobby. People that I can rely on, the people that I can count on. They are people that I have been endeared to, even being as introverts as I am. These are friendships that I have that will last a very long time. And I think that's very cool. We've got a community. And there's this shared passion in trying to improve your skills and improve your techniques and grow your art form and grow your hobby. I think it's obviously the best time it's ever been for the hobby. A lot of more people are open to the idea, but unless you've been exposed to it in, in some form, I think it's very hard for people to appreciate and understand what, what's going on if, they, if they're not familiar with it. In the end, growing the community, growing the artists, growing everything about miniature painting, it just it grows if you are willing to let other people in. So now I've, when people ask, like I, just, I immediately just get out my phone and open my Instagram. I think I, I only became a commission painter purely because of the fact that the response and, and the recognition I was getting sort of led me down that path. And when people were then prepared to, like I said, pay for, those, for, for my skill, I took pride in that. So becoming a commission painter for me was the next progression because um, I'm able to then share my work with others who truly appreciate the skill set that, that we bring to the table. I try and teach my kids to be open-minded, to find their niches. And the only difference between our painting and the Van Gogh's hanging is our niche. The Van Gogh is a niche to someone and they'll pay because they see the value in it for themselves. Someone will find the value in what we do and they will pay for that perceived value. And does it need to be paid for to be an art form? No. Is the guy that's sitting at his desk painting his first miniature with unthin paints an art form? For him, that's his expression because art is expression and that's it.